Well, good morning again. Oh, yes, we're right there. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, so much, all of us um, here today, your interest in what is um, a situation that, uh, that weighs on our hearts. And um, so, yes, yeah, so your, uh, your support and interest is really appreciated. And um, we have a, a full morning, so uh, without further ado, well, I should perhaps say my name is Melanie Klein. I'm the uh, executive director at the Boulder Shambhala Center, and it really is our privilege to host this fine panel of, uh, of leaders and, and all of you. And uh, we're very pleased that, um, that Alan Sanauki uh, will be our facilitator today and we're in very good hands. And uh, so let me introduce him to you. It's this gentleman right here to my right. Um, Alan is the vice abbot of the Zen Berkeley Center, or the Berkeley Zen Center, and, uh, and the co-founder of the Buddhist Humanitarian Project, which is very interested in, uh, in Burma or Myanmar, and, uh, and the refugee situation coming out of the humanitarian crisis of the Rohingya people. Um, Alan has uh, been connected to Burma and to the situation for many years and has uh, traveled in Burma extensively and has deep personal relationships there too. And I will turn it over to Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, on this blustery and bright spring morning. Uh, everything is, just the looking out at the mountains, everything is so clear here, it's remarkable. Uh, I want to just say who's on stage this morning and a little of the flow of the day. I think we're gonna begin the day, uh, we'll have some blessings and a meditation and then we'll have a, uh, short presentations from the people on stage and time for some question and answer. And we'll take a lunch break uh, at 11.30, which is, uh, we're accommodating Venerable Isaria because uh, monks, Theravada monks need to eat before noon. And so we will eat before noon with them. Uh, and in the afternoon, we'll have a broader presentation and, and broader discussions. It may be small group, but this may be a small group. <laughs> and so we may have uh, one form a circle and, and sit and sit around and, and discuss the wider implications of uh, religious dis discrimination and terrorism and extremism and nationalism and all of those wonderful spring topics that one wants to discuss in, in late April, right? So let me say who we have uh, on stage. To my right is uh, Kinmei Ong, who is a New York-based civil rights lawyer uh, who's been associated with issues around Myanmar and also Rakhine State. Are you from Rakhine State? I'm from Yangon, but my, my father is Rakhine and my mother ah. is Bama. Yes, so she will tell you more about herself as we, as we go on. Um, to her right is Hannah Zuberi, who is the director of the Burma Task Force and editor-in-chief of MuslimMatters.org. And she writes on issues related to Muslims living in the West, and I believe she lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, next to her is Ashley Toombs, who is the Director of External Affairs for BRAC USA. BRAC is one of the largest NGOs in the world, and they're doing fantastic work in Bangladesh with Rohingya refugees. And uh, she's been, worked on resource mobilization and strategy and overseas grants. And I've been working with her for, uh, we're getting close to a year now, I think. More. More. Uh, anyway, and then, Next to Ashley is Venerable Isaria, who is a very important figure among, in the Burmese monastic movement. Uh, he's the founder of the All Burma Monks Alliance. 
He participated actively in the 2007 Saffron Revolution and was, has been exiled for his human rights work, but I believe he's now living in Myanmar again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he has you know, a riveting perspective to share. Next to him, I can't see him, but I know he's there. Oh, <laughs> there he is. That's why I can't see you, because you're there. No, it's okay. This is <laughs> Naimin. Uh, Naimin is an 88 generation activist. The 88 generation of students were ones who uh, militantly opposed the, the dictatorship in 1988, on August 8th, 1988. Uh, and he's been living in, he, he retains his Burmese citizenship and has been living in the United States for 20 years. Uh, in 1995, he was personal assistant to Aung San Suu Kyi. When, uh, and uh, he will be serving a double function here today. He'll be translating for Venerable Isaria but also in the afternoon, uh, he will be really sharing his perspective, which is also tremendously interesting. So that's who we have on stage, and uh, maybe we can give them a welcome. So I'd like to invite Venerable Isaria to offer a, a prayer or blessing uh, at the beginning of this event. Namo Dada Bigawa Dora Do Dama Damo Dada Yadanua Wado Yakani Wat the Dindi Vidanam Yamisi Wa Nuru Sando Radindi Wa Madandi Do To Kando Rido Dosa Babangesi Nava Dadi Ewa Madi Gunu Bidam Braidan Damna Mae Karania Mata Gudale Nayana Danam Brambi de Miza Tago Uzu Zadu Zu Zadu as Osada Mudu Nadi Mani, Tando de Goza Duba Rosa, Abagi Zosa, Dana Uga Odi, Tandanger Yosa Nibe Goza, Abagabo, Ule Duana Nuga Duanaza, Goda Mazre Gainsi, Yena, when you were Uba were young, Duki Nova Gemi no Hundu Daba Dada Bundu Duki Dada, Yegezi Bana Buddha di Dada Wada Rawa Nova Dida. Diga wa ye wa manda mizi mara daga nuga tuna. De ta wa ye wa a de ta ye wa dure wa dani awi dure. Uda wa dama we di wa daba dada bonu duki dada. Na brobra nigo beta na di minye da grazi na gensi. Yaro da na biga denya nenya menya da doga mezea. Mada ya da ni em boda ma yuda. Ega boda manura ke. E won't be the babu de du mana than why ye abri manam. Medins are the baloga, the main mana than why ye abri manam. O dandos are didi insa adam bada, awira mada badam. They dance at any day no wa. They are no yawada da wida made o. E danda denya de dea, be ma made them, we are a mida mau. They dance at Nubaga madila wada than in adam and o. Kami du wini agi dan nai zado gabadi abu nare di tadu 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 jangan macam dah jawab si. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Anna to give a, a prayer or a blessing. You can swing that microphone around. Or, let's see. Okay. Do you want, or you can hold. You can hold it. Much hold it. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayy al-Qayyum. La ta'hudhu sinatan wa la nawm. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم 
ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يعوض هذهما وهو العلي العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار آمين يا رب So I'm going to invite you to uh, join me in meditation. So first, sit comfortably in an upright position. You can close your eyes and let your hands rest lightly in your lap or on your knees. Let your mind be receptive so you can allow these words just to land easily in your awareness. The Vietnamese Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh wrote a book in the late 1980s that was called Peace is Every Step. And there's a section of that where he says, mindfulness must be engaged. And this is what he writes there. When I was in Vietnam, so many of our villages were being bombed. Along with my monastic brothers and sisters, I had to decide what to do. Should we continue to practice in our monasteries or should we leave the meditation halls in order to help the people who were suffering under the bombs? After careful reflection, we decided to do both, to go out and help people and to do so in mindfulness. We called it engaged Buddhism. Mindfulness must be engaged. Once there is seeing, there must be acting. Otherwise, what is the use of seeing? We must be aware of the real problems of the world. Then with mindfulness, we will know what to do and what not to do to be of help. Peace is every step. Shall we continue the journey? So to my understanding in the Buddha's instructions for mindfulness, he invites us to become aware that we are living in our body, our breath, our feelings and thoughts. We are always living with other beings and people. So we are engaged with the world, aware that we are never apart from the world and all of the creatures in it. This is the ethical dimension of Buddhist practice. Facing the reality of interdependence, what I call I or me, is not a small, isolated, individual self. My body and mind extend widely, and there's no inside or outside to it, really. The whole world is the self which comprises one complete reality. 
There's a saying in my Zen tradition, uh, there's no place in the world to spit. That's because every place is precious. So, when you are ready, take a deep breath in, fill in your body, and then breathe out as slowly and steadily as you can through your mouth. You can feel your belly contract. You can feel the stream of air as it moves through your lips and back out into the wide world. So take four or five breaths like this. When you're ready, just settle into a natural rhythm of breathing. Not too deep or slow, just comfortable and open. Allow your breath to fill your chest and your belly. And if you no notice some tightness or contraction, see if you can use your breath to relax that tension. And breathing like this can bring a real uh, refreshing change. You can try this whenever you need that refreshment. Try it at work or before a meeting. Take a breath when the telephone rings and pick it up on the third ring instead of reaching for it immediately. You can return to this kind of breathing in the midst of difficulty or crisis. Mindful breathing is a simple way to ground our thoughts and feelings in breath. If you feel some stiffness or resistance on the out-breath, just begin again without any judgment, without any idea of success or failure. And soon you'll have some control over your breath. And you may find you have some mastery of your thoughts themselves. Feel the air as it flows in and out of your body. Each in-breath brings life, and with each exhalation, we pass away. But as long as, long as we're alive, in-breath follows out-breath, which follows in-breath. So we're constantly coming back to life, dying a little, and coming back to life. The air itself reaches everywhere. It's completely connected like a single seamless fabric that's spread across the world. So the air we are breathing this moment here in Boulder is the same air that a Rohingya mother in Kutupalong refugee camp is breathing. A Central American child who's been separated from his parents on the U.S. border is breathing this air. 
So is a homeless man with just a blanket and a small backpack sitting outside the bus station in downtown Denver. It's the air that an anxious mother and daughter are breathing as they sit in the hospital emergency room waiting for hours to see a doctor. I think about where I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. And there's a spit of land across the bay that's home to San Quentin Prison. And 5,000 men live there behind these rusting steel bars. And the air that they breathe carries with it the smell of the sea and the fog and the closeness of bodies. And many of us have connection to a man or woman in jail or in prison here in the United States, in detention in the Southwest, in Myanmar, a friend or relative, maybe someone we visit or think of. The circumstances of our lives find some of us walking the streets and others under lock and key. But coming back to basics, our lives and our breath is the same. So then, we can hold in mind a vision that's thousands of miles to our south. The vast rainforests of Brazil, which in a sense are breathing for our whole planet. Continuously taking in carbon dioxide and exhaling huge amounts of oxygen. In those forests, developers and corporate agriculture are moving in rapidly, clearing away the old growth. These Amazon forests are disappearing at the rate of 20 square miles a day. At this rate of destruction, they'll be gone before the end of the 21st century. So we're depriving ourselves of the very air that we need. So we come back to Thich Nhat Hanh's proposition that mindfulness must be engaged because it is engaged. I am not alone. You are not alone. Countless beings are breathing and being with us. We suffer because these beings suffer, and we are not separate from them. Right mindfulness, part of what the Buddha taught as the Eightfold Path, is the complete awareness of this interdependence. It means we see that we are in relationship with all beings. And that together we co-create the world. That is the ethical ground of mindfulness. So we should all do the best job that we can in this life. And we should also feel free to enjoy our breathing. Again, as Thich Nhat Hanh says, suffering is not enough. It's important that we enjoy our lives and our way of sharing together. 
So thank you very much. Why don't you shake your limbs a little, get a little loose. Great. So we're going to begin with some, uh, a round of presentations and we'll have time for some question and answer. And we've asked people to speak for about 10 minutes. I think that uh, Hannah and Ashley actually have some uh, graphic presentations. Uh, but I'd like to uh, invite Kin to begin. Uh, so please. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Actually, maybe I'll take it out. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my name's Kim A. Elm. Um, as Hosan Allen mentioned, I am a Burmese American civil rights lawyer and, and writer based out of New York. Uh, most of my, my career has been focused on immigrant rights and civil rights um, here in the United States. Um, I, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in, in, in Burma, in Yangon. Um, my mother, my parents are Buddhist, I'm Buddhist. Uh, my mother um, is uh, Bama, which is the ethnic majority in, in, in Burma, um, and part Shan. My father is uh, Rakhine, a Buddhist Rakhine uh, from Sitwe. And when I was four years old, we left. I, I lived in Malaysia for a few years um, and then came here at the age of seven and grew up here uh, in various places um, and, and you know, experienced my life as, as an, an immigrant and, and a person of color here in, in the United States, which is what's shaped my perspective of the world and, and, and um, my, um, my, my, um, my career, my um, work has been focused on, on immigrant and civil rights. And so when um, yeah, I, I kept abreast of, of things that were happening in, in Burma and Myanmar, um, and when the um, latest kind of Rohingya crisis um, escalated, I began to see um, similarities and parallels to many of the, the issues that were happening here with, with um, ethnic nationalism and, and, and um, um, uh, anti-immigrant sentiment. Um, I also uh, began to, to, to study and learn more about um, a lot of the other ethnic oppression that was happening in, in Burma and Myanmar. Um, I think here in the United States, we hear a lot about the Rohingya crisis just because that's been the big thing in the news um, the last few years. But um, in, in Myanmar, there's been um, tensions between the military government, which took over in 1962, with many different ethnic groups in different areas of, of, of Myanmar, um, where a lot of the same tactics that, that are that have been used in Rakhine State have been deployed, albeit to a, a different scale. And so I, I began to learn about all those things um, that happened in my country of birth and became interested in uh, both writing about it from my experience as an immigrant and person of color in the United States, but also applying the lens that I uh, learned here as a civil rights lawyer to that conflict um, with the goal of, um, I, I think, um, um, mobilizing more Burmese of all different ethnic groups and religious backgrounds from the diaspora in, in, in the United States and abroad to be more engaged politically um, to um, 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 kind of support the, the Rohingya and, and Muslims and other ethnic minorities that are being oppressed and also to apply um, a civil rights lens to, to, to that conflict. Um, I, I think that, that um, what a lot of people, when, when, when a lot of people learn that I'm a Burmese Buddhist they, in the United States, um, I think a lot of the, 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 the questioning is that how can, this, how can there be um, um, so much um, um, prejudice and oppression against um, a, another ethnic group, another religious group in, um, a, reli in, in a country that is, is Buddhist, is a religion of peace. But um, what I, I try to do through my writing and through uh, speaking is to contextualize how um, 
the, the Burmese military has um, actively used and, and perverted uh, our religion um, in support of, of um, ethnic nationalism. Um, and, and religious nationalism. So, you know, Buddhism is, is our religion. It's like any other religion that can be, um, you know, perverted and, and, and used in a way that's wrongful and, and, and not accurate. Um, and, and so I've tried to kind of contextualize that as well as explain the, the, the history of the country um, and, and how um, um, this has happened. Um, I, I think a lot of the, the seeds of the, the tensions in the country go back to the time of colonialism when Buddhism um, was, was lost a lot of power because there was a lot of um, uh, missionary activity in the country and a lot of uh, conversions that were, that missionaries targeted with ethnic minorities like the Kachin, the Karen, um, and the Chin, and many of whom now have fled the oppression that they faced there and who make their home in the United States as, as refugees. Um, at the same time, the Bama, who were the main ethnic group in, in the country, um, were lost a lot of power, obviously, to the British because they were, um, they were, um, um, uh, they, they lost um, leverage in, in the country um, and, and they were kind of at the bottom of the ethnic um, um, uh, hierarchy there. Um, at the same time, a lot of um, uh, people of South Asian descent were brought over to the country from, um, from, from the subcontinent to engage in commerce and help engage the, the colonial state. And so there was, I think, a sense of resentment that started in that time as well as a sense among Burmese Buddhists of the religion being under attack, um, and which I think has um, persisted to this day and has been um, ma manipulated by the military to foment extremism to support their, their cause. Um, I, when Myanmar made the transition, when Burma made the transition um, to, to the power, current power sharing arrangement now from military rule, it seemed like you know, it, it happened pretty seamlessly and peacefully, and there was a lot of hope. I had a lot of hope. And I had felt um, kind of growing up that um, because Burma was so isolated, I grew up here, and I'm an American like, like most of you, but because it was so isolated, um, I, I wasn't sure how someday it could make that, that transition, and I thought, well, maybe we dodged the bullet, and, and, and that, that there wasn't, you know, it, 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 it was okay. But I think that because as the, the country has opened up, um, there's been greater disparities of wealth, and a lot of the, 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 um, the, the Burmese peasantry in the countryside, and you know, even in the city, many of whom are B B Buddhist and Bama, which is the ethnic majority, are actually worse off today than they were before, both because of inflation and so forth, but also vis-a-vis -vis other people who have um, you know, done very well under, under, as, as the country has opened up. And the military has, um, I think, you fostered elements like Mabatha, like the extremists, to um, kind of, just like we have here with, with white nationalists and, and, and you know, the conservative movement, to get support from um, the, the, the Bama Buddhist peasants for their actions by um, fostering um, the, this nationalism that really is an ethnic nationalism, but which um, has Buddhists, um, you know, that, that uses Buddhism to to its its um, its its uh, to to his purposes. Um, but it, you know, there's. I think that that what's important to to remember in looking at the the crisis in in Myanmar and Rakhine State. Um, is to contextualize it against this dynamic of military um, um, use of nationalism, just like we have here in, in the United States. Um, but, uh, and, you know, as, as many of you may have seen in news coverage, there's, um, um, you know, reports of uh, social media accounts that 
um, um, put out stories that you know foment um, tension and who are currently pointing at the Rohingya specifically and, and Muslims more generally as, as a target because you know, I, I think that they are aware of what's happening in the world with global Islamophobia and the real threat of, of, of um, terrorism to um, kind of fashion an enemy so that um, the other people in, in Myanmar and Burma and particularly the, the Burma Buddhist peasants who are in reality worse off um, economically and socially than they were in the past to their support. And, and I think that you know, the, the other ethnic minorities as well who have also been struggling against um, the, 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 the military regime for many generations, um, I, I think by creating the Rohingya as kind of a threat, it kind of keeps the other, it, it, it's an attempt to keep other ethnic mm -hmm. minorities, some of whom, many of whom are Christian, um, religious minorities as well, also in check. Um, I, I think it's, it's um, really important to keep that dynamic in mind as well because we don't hear as much about the other ethnic groups and, and their struggles, um, but they've experienced a lot of the same um, tactics as the, the, the Rohingya, but for many, many generations. Um, and, I, I, and, and not necessarily from a Buddhist nationalist perspective at the time, because we, we, we had military rule, but it was the same tactics that the military um, have, been, have been using. Um, I think, um, um, you know, what the, 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 the other ethnic groups, they're called the Tayanda, they're, they're seen as being um, um, native to Myanmar, but it's, they, they've experienced a lot of the same tactics, but with different goals where it's a kind of like a forced inclusion into a Buddhist, Bama, Burmese identity, even though they may be of a different religion, they may speak a different language, and this forced Burmanization whereas the Rohingya have been framed as outsiders who don't belong and, and, and as an enemy. I think in part because um, they've been conflated with people who came over from the subcontinent during um, colonialism and also because everyone knows there's, Bangladesh is very populous and so there's this idea going back to colonial times of Buddhism being under th threat of Nyama and its identity, its Buddhist Bama identity being under threat. Um, and, and so um, as a result of that, the Rohingya are kind of cast out of the, the Burmese identity. So the same, the same tactics that have been used to um, um, kind of bring in and enforce Burmanization of the other ethnic groups has been used to kind of push the Rohingya out literally and figuratively, like literally out of the country, as well as figuratively from the idea of what it means to be Burmese. Like after independence, the Rohingya had full citizenship, but over time their rights were stripped away um, to the point that they're not only outsiders, but their identity is, is being denied. And I think my, my interest in writing and talking about this work is again to apply my, my experience as a civil rights lawyer and immigrant in the United States to this so that Burmese in the diaspora and ideally in uh, Burma as well can, can understand that with the help of allies. Um, and so I've been in touch with a small group of um, Burmese American activists from, diff or, or actually Burmese activists from not just Americans, from, um, expats as well as some people who live in the country who are trying to, to, to do this, this work of um, applying these kind of civil rights lens and, and trying to contextualize what's, what's happening. Um, and, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about that in our work um, um, as the day goes on. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. I'm, uh, well, that background, uh, Saved me some work here. 